But the hypocrisy of fighting racism abroad while ignoring it at home grew clearer. Pickets appeared at Yankee Stadium with signs reading, if we are able to stop bullets, why not balls? This war dealt with racism in part, and this was brought home. So I think there was this heightened consciousness about racism itself and, and, and the whole war discrediting racism. And I think that was what energized black people to a great degree. Blacks now demanded and got thousands of good paying defense jobs. And with their newfound economic strength, they supported the Negro Leagues as never before, and they insisted on equal opportunity. Black leaders again pressed Landis for an answer. I've said everything that's going to be said on that subject. The answer is no. On July 6th, 1944, a month after D-Day, a young Army lieutenant named Jack Roosevelt Robinson boarded a military bus near Fort Hood, Texas. The driver ordered him to get to the back of the bus where the colored people belong. Robinson refused and was court-martialed. But the Army judges found him fully within his rights and acquitted him. I had learned, Robinson wrote, that I was in two wars, one against a foreign enemy, the other against prejudice at home. A few days after Robinson's trial, Kennesaw Mountain Landis died at the age of 77. 